In the last video, we created a JavaFX Spring Boot application. We're going to continue with this and get the application to show an empty line chart. We'll populate it with data later in the tutorial. Let's open the stock client project that we created back in video 2 and go back to the stock UI module that we created in video 3. This module had two application classes and a stage initializer. We're going to update the stage initializer to display the UI for this application. The stage will need a scene. This is the container we're going to put the UI elements into. The scene needs a parent, which we'll create in a minute. And we can set the width and height of the display here. Let's use 800 by 600. Let's create this parent as a local variable. IntelliJ IDEA works out that this needs to be of type parent. I'm going to move this to the top of the method so all the stage functionality is together in the method. While we're thinking about the stage, let's call show so we don't forget to display it. Now we need to work out where this parent is going to come from. We're going to use fxml to define what elements are on the user interface. Declaring the view elements in fxml gives a nice clean separation between the view and the model and controller if we're following an MVC pattern. We haven't declared a dependency on fxml classes yet, so let's add a Maven dependency. We need to add a dependency on JavaFX fxml. IntelliJ IDEA will add the relevant dependency to the pom.xml and download the required jar files. Now we can import the fxml loader class. The fxml loader needs to know the location of the fxml file. We'll say this can be found in a chart resource. We'll create this as a field in the stage initializer. It's going to be a spring resource. We can use the value annotation to tell Spring where to find the file. Let's say it's on the class path and it's a file called chart.fxml. The fxml loader needs a URL, not a resource, so we'll call get URL on the chart resource field. Let's assign this to a local variable so we can use it later. Get URL throws an exception. So we'll surround the call with a try catch block. In the catch section, we'll throw a new runtime exception for the purposes of keeping the tutorial simple, but this is not a useful way to deal with exceptions in production code. If the exception is thrown, none of the rest of the code can be run. So we'll move the catch block down underneath the rest of the method body. Now we can finally initialize our parent by calling fxmlloader.load. We need to create our fxml file. Let's go to the resources directory and create a new fxml file, chart. IntelliJ IDEA creates a basic fxml file for us and we can fill in the details we need. A view usually needs a controller. We'll declare ours as called chart controller. IntelliJ IDEA has code generation even inside the fxml file. So we can create this missing controller class from inside the fxml file. This has been created in the default package. Let's move it into the same package as all the other classes. A move like this always uses the refactoring capabilities of IntelliJ IDEA, so files are moved safely. If we go back to chart.fxml, we can see the path to the controller has been updated with the full package name. We don't need the default height and width here. We'll set this in a different component. We're also not going to use the anchor pane. We'll change this to a VBox. We can use optimize imports to remove all the unnecessary imports from the fxml file. Let's see what happens when we run this application by going back to the Spring Boot application class and running it using Control Shift F10 for Windows or Control Shift and R for the Mac. The application runs in the services window because it's a Spring Boot application. And a Java window pops up at the dimensions we set in the stage. There's nothing in there yet as we haven't put anything into the view. Let's make a small change to see that we can control what is displayed in the window. We'll go back to Stage Initializer and set a title for the view. Let's create a field for Application Title 
and get IntelliJ IDEA to create a constructor with the appropriate parameters to initialize this field. We can use Spring to populate the value of this title. When we rerun the application, we can see JavaFX uses this new title in the title bar. Hard coding string values is not good practice for a number of reasons, so let's get this title from somewhere else. In application.properties, we can add a new property and call it something like spring.application.ui.title. Then we can set the value for this title. Back in Stage Initializer, we can use Spring Expression Language to say that we want to use this property for the title of our application. Now when we run the application, we see this value from application properties used as the title of the window. There's one last thing we need to do to make the most of Spring in this JavaFX application, and that's to be able to use the beans from the application context in the JavaFX wiring. FXML Loader has a method setController which we can use to say where we want to get our JavaFX controllers from. We want to get these from the application context, so first we need to create a field for application context. We can add a new constructor parameter for this field so that it's auto wired in. Once this is set up, we can call getBean on application context to provide the controllers that JavaFX needs. All our wiring is complete, so let's finally create our line chart. In chart.fxml, we'll declare we want a line chart. A line chart has an x-axis, which for our purposes is going to be a category axis. In other words, it's going to have a series of strings as values. This is our time axis. The y-axis, on the other hand, is going to be a number axis. This axis is for the stop price. Let's set the height of the chart to 600, the maximum height for our application. We also need to give it an FX ID, which is the ID of the field in the chart controller that will contain the reference to this line chart. Let's call it chart. IntelliJ IDEA correctly identifies there's no field called chart in the controller class, so let's get it to create the field for us. We set up this line chart as a chart with a string x-axis and a number, or in our case, double y-axis. We can use the fxml annotation to show this field is populated from an fxml file. Let's also annotate the class as a component. Now, when we run the application, we see the outline of a line chart shown in our window with numbers for our price axis and time on the x-axis. We have successfully created a JavaFX application that is integrated into Spring Boot that uses FXML to declare what should be in the view. In the following videos of this tutorial, we'll get this chart updating itself with stock prices in real time. Thanks for watching.